My students have been wondering, why don't we just all use one language? Why do languages change anyway? I use their curiosity to spark the lessons I used for this process. My name is Sarah Harris, and I teach five sections of 10th grade English language arts at Jordan Matthews High School in Siler City, North Carolina. Two of my classes are academic level. One of those is an inclusion class, which includes students from the EC and ESL populations at my school. The other three classes that I have this year are honors level. One of them is the content class for some of the students in our school's advancement via individual determination program, also known as AVID. The other two are made up of students in our school's dual language program. So my English class is paired up in the same block with a Spanish language arts class. It was very serendipitous that I was getting ready to start my unit on Shakespeare's Othello when I participated in phase one. In the past, I have introduced my Shakespeare unit with a little lecture about the history of the English language to help students see some of the reasons why Shakespeare's language seems so strange to us today. I was inspired to use more maps in this lesson. So I had students look at, at the movement of languages that impacted English over time. They looked at Gaelic languages, listened to a video of Old English, tracked the movement of Latin brought by the Romans, listened to some Middle English, and finally looked at the impact of French brought by the Normans in 1066, and the stratification that this has created in our language even to today. I wanted this lesson to show students elements of the human journey and shared experiences in various cultures. I used the Cornell Notes process through this activity, so students were given time after the lecture itself to collaborate with each other and make sure that everyone in their table groups had gotten all the important information and brainstorm some good questions to help themselves study the notes later. The final piece of the notes was an academic summary where students communicate back to me the important highlights of what they learned. I usually differentiate the summary activities that I ask my students to do. So some students were given a series of organized frames to guide their summary, other students got a group of stems to organize and form their own summary, and still others were just given some tips and recommendations to drive their summaries. The next part of this sequence was activity one for phase two of the certification. I found an infographic in the National Geographic resources that showed words that are shared among many languages. First, I asked students to read the graphic by choosing a word and finding how many languages shared that word or a similar word and also looking at how rapidly or slowly that word has changed over time. Then students were asked to collaborate with each other by comparing and contrasting the words that they chose on the graphic. I was actually surprised by how much my students enjoyed communicating about the information in this lesson. Some students got the graph on paper, but my copies didn't come out in color like I had hoped, so I also made the graphic available on my class website, so some students interacted with this lesson online instead. My next activity was inspired by one of my co-teachers who is from Venezuela. She was telling me how the variety of Spanish where she is from is famous for dropping off the S sound at the end of words. So when I came across an NPR article about variations in consonant and vowel sounds in languages around the world, I was excited to share it with our shared students. I was also excited that this activity showed interaction between the human and natural world, since it talks about how the geography and environment has changed the way that languages develop. So I used this activity for the second part of phase two and focused on the map it theme. A lot of my lessons through the year hit the historical and cultural perspectives, but it was nice to be able to add in some ecological and geographic perspectives in this particular lesson. Again, some of my students interacted with this activity online while others used paper, and some students even used a variety of both. I decided to make all the activities available on the class website so students could self-pace a little. As you can see in these pictures, some students are collaborating, like the two students in the middle, the one in blue helping the student on her right. In the other picture, we can see that one of the students is using a laptop while the other is elected for paper. And the student in the dark blue sweatshirt, he's listening on his headphones to the consonant and vowel sounds while using the article with the map on paper. I'm really proud of how much work my students put into producing content in this series of lessons. They have been working on academic summaries, so they did one for their history of the English language notes, and also the NPR article about the environment's impact on consonant and vowel sounds. They also did a collaborative reflection on the infographic, and the dual language students did this fantastic Padlet, which was too large to fit in just one screenshot. 
where they took this knowledge and compared what they know about the similarities and differences in English and Spanish grammar. I will leave you with some reflections from my students. I was very excited to inspire their curiosity, help them see connections between the human and natural world, and bring more maps and graphics into my instruction. I hope this will inspire them to think positively positively about different languages and dialects that they encounter and be proud of their own language. <laughs>